What's happening, hobby people? My name is Jacob from the Dry Pain Pot. Welcome back. We're jumping right back into the A Song of Ice and Fire minis game. Now, I know it's been a hot minute since one, I've made a tutorial, and two, I've even done anything with this game, but we're back at it. And this episode is actually a viewer request. So, Tom Sheehan from Ireland went ahead and hit me up. He's one of my subscribers. He left a comment on my Stark Sworn Sword video. And if you haven't seen that video, be sure to check it up up top because it'll definitely help you out if you have the starter set and you're working on those Stark models. So he went ahead and had the suggestion and I had to do it. Great John number was in the box. It's one of those models I really wanted to paint up, but I was so caught up with other things that it was kind of just pushed aside. But that suggestion, you know, forced me back into painting these models. So. Thank you, Tom. I hope this tutorial lives up to your expectations, and I hope it helps you out when you're painting up your great John Umber. And also, if you have no idea what I'm talking about right now, um, but you're interested in the A Song of Ice and Fire minis, check out the unboxing I did up top as well. It's an older video, but it's still pretty good. I go through the entire starter kit, show you everything that's in there, and there's like over 100 models. It's a great deal. So if you like A Song of Ice and Fire, or you just like miniatures in general, pick it up. It's, it's really great value. And the game is really fun too. I've played it actually only once. I thought I played it twice, but I played it once and it was an absolute blast. It took a little while to get used to the uh, the mechanics of the game, but once you get them down, it's, it's really a good time. So let's not waste any more time because I know it's been a while since I uploaded a video and I really want to just jump right into this. Let's do it. As always, before I start painting this model, I cleaned up any mold lines, giving him a good wash in some soapy water, and primed him with some Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 paint and primer. You can of course use whatever primer you'd like, but this is just what works for me. And I started things off by painting the tabard with corn red. Now be sure to keep your eye open for any spots where it peeks through, like under the arms. I found myself skipping over a few spots and had to go back later to cover them up. With a good base coat complete, I moved on to painting the shirt with Averland Sunset. While waiting for my layers to dry, I decided to paint the bottom portion of the model with Abaddon Black. I would normally paint each part of the model in a different color, but since the bottom is just one solid piece and not visible, Abaddon Black was a good choice. Now if you've seen any of my other videos, then you know what's coming next. I decided to paint the folds, the, the folds, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, F-A-U-L-D-S. If I'm not, let me know in the comment section so I never mispronounce that ever again. I'm gonna call them the, the Falds. Um, I painted the Falds, the Chainmail, and the Sword with Vallejo's alcohol-based silver. Now, for those of you not familiar with this paint, it's alcohol-based, uh, pretty self-explanatory, uh, so it must be thinned with rubbing alcohol, and it's tricky in its own ways. If you'd like to learn how to use this stuff, and I highly suggest that you do because it's so awesome, then check out this video that I made ages ago. It's an old tutorial, but it's a good one. Next up were the boots and gloves. So for these, I used Rhinox Hide, and that's it, plain and simple. When speed painting, I first focus on laying down all of my base coats, then I wash and finish up with highlights. While I wouldn't necessarily call this a speed paint, I decided to not spend days working on this as there are like over a hundred models in the starter set. So if I ever dream about getting through this box, which I don't know if I ever will, I have to go through and paint these quickly, but in a way that I'm happy with. I don't like when a single color is repeatedly used on different parts of a model. So I decided to paint the pauldrons and gauntlets with Ironbreaker. This worked out well because Ironbreaker is less reflective than Vallejo Silver and breaks up the multiple silver parts of this model, making it look less flat. I wanted to use a lot of dark browns for this model. Again, I didn't want things to look flat and use the same color over and over again. So for great jaw numbers for Cape, I mixed some Abaddon Black and Rhinox Hide to really darken things up. The straps were very simple. I gave them a good base coat in Steel Legion Drap. And be careful with this step as it's easy to get some of this onto a layer that you've already painted. If that happens, don't worry because we haven't washed yet. Just go back and touch up any spots with whatever color you need. For the horn, I used Screaming Skull. This is a light color and fairly thin, so you might need two to three good coats to really get the coverage that you're looking for. I also used Screaming Skull when painting the grip on the sword. 
Now this next step is very important. As you see on the model, the fur is draped over Great John's cape. The secret here is to dry brush the fur before you paint the cape. This allows for you to be a bit messy and be sure that you dry brush the entirety of the cape and not mess up your base coat. For this dry brush, I mixed Rhinox Hide and Screaming Skull for the first pass. After I was happy with the coverage, I went back with some pure Screaming Skull for a bit of extreme highlights. I searched online and couldn't find out what color his hair is, so I decided to go for a dirty blonde. For the base coat, I mixed Screaming Skull and Averland Sunset. This is a very light color, so it took about three good base coats to really cover the primer. Whenever I paint skin, I start first with a dark color and work my way up gradually. While I didn't plan on spending too much time on the face, I still started with a dark base. I used Kislev Flesh for the face because I figured that after a wash, it would be a great color for shadows and creases. Now while I love Vallejo Metallics, and I'm not sponsored by Vallejo, Vallejo you should sponsor me, um, they like to run and are sometimes difficult to be precise with. Because of this, I did all of the fall trim in Gehenna's gold. And if you were wondering, this by the way is my favorite gold color that Games Workshop makes. I've been using it on my death watch since day one, and I love this stuff. It's so good. I wasn't able to catch it on film, but I also painted the hilt in Rune Lord Brass. It was finally time to paint the cape. For this, I used pure Abaddon Black, plain and simple. For the blade sheath, I mix Steel Legion Drab with a bit of Rhinox Hide. Be very careful here and try not to get any of this on the fur that was just dry brushed. If you do, I wouldn't worry too much because the color we're using here is fairly close to what was used on the fur. But if you're a perfectionist or you really spilled over, this might be a problem. It was finally time to start washing the model. I first started with Nolan Oil and used this on the fold, red and yellow cloth, pauldrons, blade, fur, and boots. Now I usually use a variety of washes on a model. A lot more browns and reds and some blues, but the Starks are men of the rugged north, so I want my shadows to be extremely dark and my colors to be a bit washed out. I didn't want to warm the colors up, just darken and dirty them. Just like I do with Necrons, I applied some watered down Cryptek Armor Shade to the Rune Lord Brass on the hilt of the blade. I didn't really want to warm the colors up, but I love this combination. I then applied a light wash of Reichland Flesh Shade to the face. Be sure not to let this stuff pool because the face isn't too detailed and too much wash can easily wash the whole thing out. Last but not least, I applied a wash of Seraphim Sepia to the hair. Now this stuff is great because it's sort of an orange wash and it looks great when applied to yellows or reds. All of my washes were dry and it was time to begin doing some minor highlights. I started with the base coat of Kiesla Flesh on the face and focused on the forehead, eyebrows, nose, cheekbones, and lips. I then added some Screaming Skull to the mix and with very thin layers just focus on the nose, eyebrows, and cheeks. I repeated this process using smaller and smaller layers until I was adding tiny bits of pure Screaming Skull to just the brow of the nose. For the eyes, I put a dab of white scar and then with my finest tip brush, just a speck of Abaddon Black as the pupil. When doing the eyes, less is more. Unless you're trying to paint huge anime eyes, make those irises and pupils itty bitty. To finish up the head, I mixed some Screaming Skull with just a pinch of Averlyn Sunset and applied a few thin layers to the hair for some extreme highlights. For highlighting cloth, I often use the same routine no matter what colors I'm using. I first start with a wide, thin highlight of the original color. So for the yellow, that'll be Averlyn Sunset, and for the red, that'll be Corn Red. I then mix a 50-50 ratio of the base color and a lighter color and do an extreme highlight and that's it. For the yellow, I used Uriel Yellow and for the red, I used Evil Sun Scarlet. Next came highlighting all of the leather. For the boots and gloves, I used a 50-50 of Rhinox Hide and Steel Legion Drab and for the sheath, I used pure Steel Legion Drab. To make all of the straps pop, I used pure Screaming Skull and just did an extreme edge highlight. The easiest way to do this is to apply a bit of paint to your brush, turn your brush sideways, and allow for the edge of the straps to catch the paint. 
because my main 40k army is death watch i've really gotten used to highlighting black armor so highlighting great jaw numbers cloak was a breeze if you'd like an in-depth tutorial on highlighting black please let me know in the comment section below and for this model i wanted to keep things simple i start by looking at the model under my light source to see where natural shadows occur then with a thinned down mix of Mechanicus Standard Gray and Abaddon Black, I start to cover up the places where light catches, so that's any ripple in the cape or any upturned and flat area. I repeated that process using more and more pure Mechanicus Standard Gray, and I was complete. Don't forget to cover a smaller area while you're highlighting, or else you'll just go over your last layer and lose that highlight. Now here are some minor highlights that I applied. I added some white scar to the Screaming Skull and applied a highlight along the length of the horn. I used that mix to add some extreme highlights to the leather straps and then added some fresh Gehenna's Gold along the trim to bring back a bit of that shine. At this point, I was technically done, but it felt as though something was missing. The fog looked a bit too bland for my liking, so I decided to play around with some color. I thinned down some Xerius purple and glazed all of the shadows on the red cloth. This really helped the model pop and ended up being exactly what was needed. If you're following along at home, you just need to base the model to match the theme of your army and you're done. So a massive shout out to my patrons, and I have to refer to a list. Um, I know my old videos, I had it all memorized, but I've had some new patrons and some left. So a big shout out to Griffin, $2 Sucky Sucky, Che Phillip, Benny B, uh, The Dark Path, and Leandrist. Thank you all so very much for your continued support. Um, it, means, it means the absolute world to me. And for those of you who don't know, things have been a little insane. Um, I was uploading weekly back in December, well actually from like March to December, just weekly videos. And then I started teaching for the very first time and it was midway through the semester and I got my COVID vaccine, which I had a reaction to and I have a list of excuses why I haven't uploaded a video. But I'm still uploading these videos, I promise you that. I mean, I've got, I put way too much money into this not to. <laughs> and it's what I love, it's, it's what's keeping me sane through this uh, semester while I'm teaching. So the videos are coming, but they're just not as soon. So I went ahead and let all my patrons know, if you can't support the channel anymore or you don't wish to, that's perfectly fine. You know, I appreciate all the support thus far. And for those of you who have stuck around though, uh, just thank you. I, it really means the world to me and I appreciate um, you having faith in this channel. And as I said at the end of the year, you know, I look forward to um, what's going to come in 2021. And so far, it's been kind of slow, but in the meantime, while I have been making videos, I've been getting so many models. I've been, <laughs> I've spent so much money on um, so many different models that I want to paint, that I want to do unboxings for. It's going to be a really good time. So I've got a lot of stuff to make content. It's just about having that time to do it. So new videos coming soon, I guarantee you. And feel free to follow me on Instagram. That is where I'm posting most of my content. I'm on there all the time. And if I'm not posting, I'm just around. So if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to drop those in the comment section below or hit me up on Instagram. Because like I said, I'm on there every single day. Now wash your brushes, clean your paint pots, and keep on painting. <laughs>